I'm going to begin, uh, I guess, by, just by asking where this idea sort of came from for, for Climax. Uh, actually, I was working on other projects about uh, uh, groups that turn crazy, uh, gr groups of people, one based on a, on a story that took place in the States, another one that was like a, so some personal story about people turning crazy. And uh, the, as a director, when you want to start a movie, they ask you for a script. They ask you a script with dialogues. Then the, to finance a movie, they mostly ask you, can you put a famous actor? It will make things easier. And then when, when you want to reach some actor that you don't are very close to already, they, 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 they want to send the script to the manager or to the agent and then also to in order to finance the movie they, they want to submit the script that usually is 100 pages long to all these um, financial groups, the banks, the uh, state subsidies and for one year you have all these people whose cinematic taste you hate that comment your script and it's like very annoying because everybody talks about a movie that doesn't even exist. Uh, and, and then uh, and, uh, it brings a lot of dirt to the project. So uh, uh, I was wondering which kind of movie I could do very quickly without anybody commenting me in my project. So uh, um, I wrote two pages based on a story that I had heard of. And then from there on, uh, I convinced uh, my co-producers from the um, last movie from Love, Wild Bunch and R Rectangle, the, um, to give me a very low amount of money to shoot a movie in 15 days and uh, with dancers and I said well it's going to be um, probably half narrative, half documentary, I don't know what it's going to be but please give me uh, a little amount for, for, of money for a musical movie and they said okay, okay, they found it and like one month later we were shooting this movie mm. uh, with all these dancers that I found mostly in France were like street dancers who had never been uh, filmed before. Be besides Sofia Butera, who's already uh, also an actress who did a lot of Hollywood movies. Sofia's great in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> especially, you know, she, she was great in every single take when she, she learns that the other girl is pregnant. She was <laughs> like imitating someone who's yeah. hard on acid. <laughs> Uh, and her performance was so good in every single take. Well, we showed it like 15 mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I can tell that she, she, neither Sofia or any of the other dancers had taken any drugs during the, the filming of this movie. But they had references that I gave them uh, uh, that can find on, on YouTube or elsewhere of people hard on crack, on crystal mess, on, on acid, on mushrooms. and. Uh, so we had like one hour and a half of people turning crazy on chemicals and um, they got inspired by those videos um, and then yeah, th th then we shot the movie w with them being very sober but at the end of the day when they were a bit tired they could really imitate very well the, like the, the craziness of, uh, of some chemicals. And, 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 and Sofia was good in every single take. Yeah. Because um, I mean, the film's set in 1996. <coughs> yeah. I was wondering because obviously it's all kind of quite confined into effectively one room for most of it. So <coughs> what, why did you decide to, to set it at a specific time? Because I mean, in, in some ways, it could really have, have, have been set now, for example. But yeah, I know probably because uh, uh, I'm, my childhood was in the in the in the late 60s, 70s, uh, when I became a man or a young man. Probably was in the in the 80s and. Uh, when I started dancing also, it was on disco music. And I, I like that kind of music. And also, um, even in my, in my previous movies, I always give them a, a vintage look. Uh, there are things from the present time that I like, but some other ones that I dislike. But, uh, th this story could not happen today without having every single person of the, uh, of the dance team uh, calling for help with their cell phone. So I if you make a movie with the same story based, no, based on the same story, but uh, settled nowadays, uh, they, they would all be on their cell phones, uh, even if they, they know how to 
to write on it anymore because they are too wasted. But the, um, the I, I, I thought it would be better to keep the that time because then it's a, it's more like a, like a bubble they cannot escape from. Mm. And what's, um, I mean, obviously, b b your films are always so different from the last. It's an incredibly eclectic range of filmmaking. What's what's next for you? Have you are you working on your next uh, project already? I don't know exactly what I'm doing next, but uh, um, when I go to a shop to buy DVDs or Blu-rays, I mostly buy documentaries or old uh, German expressionist movies. So I know probably my next movie is going to be either very silent or or a documentary, hmm. or probably I also always said that I wanted to do a movie one day in Africa, like uh, probably I'm going to do the p uh, climax part two in Congo or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Brilliant, thanks so much. <laughs> Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey. hey.